So when I was putting together this side of the room, I felt like the wall was a little bit too bad. <coughs> Thank you, Willow, for your input. channel. So since lockdown started in March, I started converting my spare room into a mini portrait studio as I started shooting boudoir sessions and this was something I wanted to do once lockdown was over. Um, the original styling and theme that I went for was quite neutral with a lot of whites and soft pastels as I wanted it to be quite romantic and something that fit in line with my vintage theme. So just over two months ago, Manchester went into a tier three lockdown, which meant that my sessions had to be again, put on hold just the same as they were at the beginning of the initial lockdown in March. Um, so I thought that this was a good time to start reevaluating my studio and trying to accommodate um, a space that would work for both vintage portraits and also vintage booba sessions as now I've introduced the two different styles of packages. So today I thought I'd do a little studio tour uh, for you guys so everyone can see how I've managed to utilise such a small space and make it work for my clients that I have in here on a daily basis. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Lauren Clitheroe and I am a photographer from Manchester in the UK and I specialise in both vintage portraits and vintage food bar sessions. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my videos, uh, but for now we will get straight into the studio tour. studio so I'm going to talk about each section individually and sort of break it down for you guys. So behind me um, is the wall that you see when you first come into my studio. I wanted to keep this quite simple. Um, I originally had these white curtains hanging up anyway uh, but wanted to make them a little bit more vintage to suit the concept of the room that I was now going for. So what I did is I tea stained these just to take some of the brightness out of them and to make them a little bit more on the creamier side. Um, I thought this would be a good background for standing up portraits just to provide a little bit of texture in the background um, for my models to stand up against. So on the back wall of my studio I have the main feature of my room. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from tree houses that you would see in jungle stories like Swiss Family Robinson and the Jungle Book um, and I took a lot of uh, variations of greens and browns to sort of tie it all in together to create that botanical feel. So the first feature of the main wall is this window here. Um, this we kept from when we originally renovated our house. Um, these doors are solid oak wood and they were built into the house uh, in the 30s when it was constructed. Um, I got the idea of Pinterest actually. It was a way of displaying antique dresses in more of a cottage core setting and I wanted to bring that into my studio. So over here I've got a reproduction, a Edwardian style dress, which I wanted to display. So I thought the wooden door would be the best way to do so. Um, we would also have in the original dark standing as well. It kind of ties in quite nicely with the variations of browns and greens that I wanted to show. On this side of it, I have also styled it with one of my loose curtains. Um, I had a few spare left over from the studio wall, so I had nothing to do with it and thought it would work quite well with this. 
um, just below, which I'll show in a, a panning shot. I've also got a little milk jar, which I've got uh, some flowers in just to sort of style the room a little bit more and tie it all together nicely. Now this table you might actually recognise from my before videos. Um, it was originally in my studio when I decorated it for boudoir and it was white and it also had three uh, separate mirrors on top. So when I was redecorating, I didn't feel that the white fit nicely with the styling concept that I was going for. So I chose to paint it a dark forest green so that it would be a direct contrast to the sage green that I've got on the wall behind me. So to decorate the dresser, I came up with a few Etsy finds. So we've got a stack of vintage books here and also a clock that's in the style of a vintage phone. Um, to finish it off, I also found a few extra pieces like these candles from Primark and also a frame that I got from Dunelm and a few plants which I also managed to find on Ikea. So when I was putting together this space, I felt the walls were looking a little bit bare. And I thought the best way to fix this was to get a various collection of vintage frames to install the wall. I was desperately looking for vintage frames everywhere and managed to find quite a few reproduction versions on Dunhill, which came in various sizes and different variations of browns and golds as well. For the pictures, I just googled um, different Edwardian celebrities and actresses from that time and just got them in different sizes so that they fit in all of the frames perfectly and sort of tied in nicely with the styling. So finally in the corner, we've got my gramophone. So as soon as I saw these online, I knew I really, really wanted one in the studio, but unfortunately the real antique ones are so expensive and wasn't something that I was able to afford at the moment. Uh, luckily Etsy produced some beautiful reproduction ones. Unfortunately, they don't actually play records properly, um, but they are aesthetically pleasing and they fit the studio. And if you're looking for something uh, just to style your room that has that antique vibe, but not actually to use, it's a pretty good buy. So by my studio window, I have this Emmanuel style chair uh, made out of wicker. Um, it's not the most comfortable chair in the world, but I've used it quite a lot in a lot of my boudoir sessions and it does come up amazing as it has a real vintage style to it. Uh, to make it more comfortable and also to tie in with the green side of the room, I managed to find this forest green throw from Primark. Um, it's beautiful and soft and really, really comfortable for my clients to sit on. And as I said, it ties in nicely with the other side of the room and blends into the bedroom side, which you're about to see. So on the other side of the room, I have my double bed here, which I will show in a bigger pan shot um, because my frame is a little bit too tight for me to show you the full scope of the bed here. Um, but this side of the room, I wanted it to be a complete contrast uh, to the jungle tree house side of the room. Now, I am completely in love with the 70s aesthetic and I wanted to try to channel that through onto this side of the room. Now, what I gather from 70s is there's a lot of warm and bright colours and a lot of clashing. So I went with a lovely burnt orange uh, bedspread set and to complement that and also to tie in with the green side of the room, I went with these forest green pillows which also have gold foiling on them. And also behind me to complete the wall, I came across this beautiful tarot card tapestry, which is a replication of the star, which you might not be able to see completely here. Now, for those who don't know tarot very well, um, this particular design is from the Rider Waite deck, which is one of the original retro style decks that you can get. It's also full of a lot of warm and bright color schemes, which tie in nicely with the 70s retro vibe. And to complete off the tapestry wall, I bought these little wide fairy lights as well, just to give it more of a warmer feel. And it also makes for a nice background for some portraits as well. So 
So in all, it was a lot of work getting my room from the original revamp to what you see now. And I can honestly say now that it's completely finished, I am so happy with it. It fits more into what I now shoot with it being both boudoir and vintage portraits. It's allowing me to accommodate to clients who like both concepts. Um, so if they're not interested in shooting outside for vintage portraits, I've now got an indoor studio that they can have tailored to the garments that they want to wear indoors as well as outdoors. I really feel like my studio is now multi-purpose and fit for everything and I really, really can't wait to get started with more sessions as soon as this new lockdown is over. So that's all for the video today, guys. So if you're looking for ways to utilize small spaces in your home as a photographer, I hope this was useful for you and that you've picked up some interesting styling tips that you can accommodate to your own small spaces and make them work for you. If you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more of my stuff, do give me a thumbs up so I know what you like. Thank you for watching and do feel free to follow me on Instagram to see more daily photography posts or subscribe here if you'd like to see more videos. I put content out every Monday and I hope to see you all in the next one. See you guys.